it's true that these are real people, it's real life, but what you're doing is not real life. It's uh, an interpretation of real life. It's just like if you see a tree and you turn around to your canvas and now you're painting the tree. That's it, you're making an interpretation of reality. It's still, even if you're a documentary filmmaker, what you're making is only a representation of this reality. If you're a fiction filmmaker, so you can make the tree and there's also a beautiful girl under the tree, even though she's not really there. You know, uh, you change reality because it's fiction and you can make whatever you want, you know, and you can add things and take them away and so on, you know. A documentary, basically, we're saying, okay, we're, we're painting still, but we're painting from life instead of out of our imagination. It's a process of choice. You know, what do you want to do and then how are you going to do it? Yeah, you want to be open-minded. You're a documentary filmmaker and reality, you're not controlling reality but you do control certain things about how you show reality. You know, um, where are you filming? Who are you filming? Uh, how do you film them? These are all the uh, questions that you can answer only if you know a general idea of, the, of your approach. Why are you making this film? Who are you making it for? Uh, do you have any kind of picture of this film in your mind before you start? Of course, the end result will be different from the picture in your mind, but you have to have some kind of guiding principle in the beginning that allows you to make decisions. And sometimes reality will start to uh, decide things for you or it will inspire you to make decisions in a particular way. And I think in documentary especially, you have to be able to feel the reality and work with reality in a way that you don't have to always do in fiction. Uh, so it's it's much more like you're dancing with the, weir with the real world in, in, in documentary. And in uh, fiction, you are just, you're entering a blank room and you're creating the reality uh, the way you like it. But, uh, so the beauty of documentary is that, you know, as a way of life, like you are exploring the real world and opening your mind to things that you didn't think about before. Like in fiction film, you're limited to whatever is in your head. In documentary, you're limited to whatever is in the world, you know. So uh, it is a good profession, like to, uh, if you want to just keep on learning about the world, keep on having new experiences, meeting new people, learning new ideas. Documentary really is the thing to do instead of fiction. But you're still making something. You're making this artifact. You're making this virtual experience for the viewer. And uh, whether or not people like your films, uh, whether or not the audiences uh, appreciate your work, it will usually be determined by how well you are able to craft this object, this virtual thing that you're going to see. You know, so We're limited as human beings. We can only see the things that are around us or the things that we see on television or in a magazine or on, uh, in the cinema. This is all we see of the world. You know, we can't know everything that happens in the world. And documentary film and film in general is just a way to expand your perception of the world. You know, to, uh, my audience is probably 99% uh, never going to go to Afghanistan, uh, but I can give them this experience. Uh, I can create an experience for the audience so that can be as close as possible as them actually going to Afghanistan, spending time in Afghanistan, learning about the society, being close to people in a way that you can't be as a tourist or someone who just comes for a few days to do business or something like that. My idea is to give the audience, to spend my own time, to give the audience um, a shortcut to, uh, to having an experience that it would take them years and years and a lot of time and effort to have that experience by themselves. My idea is to compress this experience of the real world into a form that the audience can absorb in 90 minutes, in two hours. Uh, like I was saying the other day, right? You have this, it's uh, like a um, training module in the matrix, you know. You're compressing reality into a form that can be absorbed by an audience they can experience it. You're giving them a gift of uh, experience. You're giving them a memory uh, of a place that they've never been to. You really want to communicate something and you want that what you communicate to be real. So the people watch it and they don't come away from your film with a wrong idea, um, but they're always going to come away from a film with an incomplete idea. 
Like it's never everything. It's only a small taste. But at least the taste should be accurate, you know. The taste should be honest, and it should give you an idea about what else is out there and how much you don't know. You know what I mean? The, the reality is we're, we're just uh, looking through a straw at the world, you know. We can't see the whole thing. Yeah, so uh, as much as possible, you want to expand this straw and make it bigger. You know? uh, this is the, the idea, the goal. Fiction film is in the business of making heroes that we live through their experience, you know, and uh, or we imagine ourselves being them in, you know, when we watch a, some a film with, uh, you know, whatever. And so it's like you're you're taking the same idea, except instead of Arnold Schwarzenegger or or, or uh, Angelina Jolie or something like that, you have uh, real people. You're taking real people and you're making them into larger than life heroes. That we, uh, you're making a situation where the audience inhabits the point of view and the character, not of some uh, fantasy film star, but of a real person. Most people have something that they want to say, and especially if it's kids and no one in you know, a society where no one cares what kids think. So most of them have something that they want to say, and they've never been asked before, like, what do you think about you know, this or that? No one has ever come and, and really like been very interested in what they think, you know, because they're just kids. So uh, that can work to your advantage because they they have things they want to say and no one has ever asked them before. So you give them an opportunity to start to say the things that are on their mind and the things that are kind of in their hearts. You know what I mean? You want to give them a safe space. Uh, you want to let them know that you're really interested in what they have to say, and then you give them this space to say it. Um, but what is the voice that, that, uh, that I want to hear as a director and that I want the, the audience to know about that they maybe don't know about, you know? So I will make that choice, like film ordinary people and film the civilians uh, perspective, film the people who they'll never be on television, no one will ever ask them what they think, uh, like some 11-year-old kid in an auto shop in the middle of Baghdad, you know, he's never going to, like, no one will ever ask him, you know? But I'm much more interested in uh, in his life than I'm in the lives of, you know, the president of the country or something like that. Uh, so I just don't include those people because it's just that's a political choice also. Well, um, yeah, of course you sometimes uh, in documentary you can take uh, the a lot of things onto your own shoulders. You know, you are. Uh, in order for you to have empathy with your subject and really understand what they're feeling, you have to engage with them emotionally and really feel what they feel uh, to understand it. You know? So sometimes it can become a lot, it can, can become too much. If you're in a war zone and everyone you meet has a crisis situation, they all have a relative who has been killed or injured, they're all... Uh, you know, I don't know, maybe they're, you're filming in a refugee camp, so everyone around you, they have been kicked out of their house, uh, they've had to leave their life, they've lost uh, relatives, and uh, everyone has problems, everyone around you in that situation. If, you know, the, and so if you take on the problems of everyone onto your own shoulders, it will be too much, you know. But you have to find a way to, um, uh, to understand people's problems and to sympathize with their problems, but at the same time not to have everything always on your own shoulders, you know. You have to remember, like, your relationship to people and so on. Uh, it's a strange thing when you can go to a country like Afghanistan, you're filming, there's a war going on, there are these people who, they don't know what to do, you know, they think, well, if this war gets bigger, if there will be, again, a war inside Kabul, inside the city, uh, what will happen to me, what will happen to my children? They're faced with these very real problems, but you as a filmmaker, yeah, it's dangerous while you are there. Maybe someone could shoot you or kidnap you. You're always under a little bit of stress, but at the end, you know you're going to get on a plane and go back to some you know, peaceful country, and you can escape from this situation. Uh, those people living there, they can't escape, you know. I mean, they can escape only by running across the border, you know, as an illegal uh, refugee, maybe. Or, uh, so, uh, you're in a very different situation from them. And this, uh, this difference can make a kind of uh, tension or like a, in your own mind even. You know. Maybe they're not thinking about it as much, but you think, ah, why, why do I have this freedom and they don't have this freedom, you know? 
Why am I protected and they're not protected? And you start to, you know, it's not only that you feel the, the problems of this person, you start to feel all of the problems of the injustice of the world because of these inequalities and inequities and uh, that some person is rich and some person is poor. And you can see that you know, the, 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 the rich person is not better than the poor person. They just happen to have more money. And because of this money, the, their whole life is different. Their abilities to do things in life are different. Uh, because of this thing that it doesn't really mean anything, yeah? this amount of numbers in your bank account. I mean, so you start to think about these kind of global problems and world problems a lot more than uh, maybe a normal person who doesn't have to always confront these situations so directly. Uh, but I don't know, I, th I think it's not a bad thing you know, to open up your eyes to the world and see how the world really works, see different societies, you start to have a different idea about the, the world that you live in, maybe a more comprehensive idea. Uh, you start to see the world from more different angles. It makes you, I think, sometimes it can make you more of a political person, but it can also give you really concrete ideas about the world, and you'll be informed about the world in a way that you won't be if you're just reading the newspaper and watching TV, and you live in your own universe, uh, and you never explore the universe of other people. Uh, documentary filmmaker, it can expand your own world and it makes your own world more complicated but also more interesting. <laughs> yeah, of course, I mean, I, I see the world differently, you know. Uh, every, every time you go to a new place, especially a place that you are afraid to go there, it's like you go over this uh, hurdle and then, you're, it, and then it becomes normal. Like you're afraid at first, you know, I was afraid to go to Iran. Well, I'm not really afraid to go to Iran, but like I was afraid to go to Pakistan. Like I thought, you know, it could be really dangerous. Pakistan, you know what I mean? And this is after being in Iraq and Gaza and everything. But it's like every time you go, there's this little fear and apprehension, and it's not clear like what you can do, what you can't do, and you have to become familiar with it. And when you're familiar, then nothing is uh, frightening. You know exactly what's happening. You know how to handle yourself. And, uh, and the same thing, Afghanistan. In the beginning, I was really afraid. You know, at the beginning, I came to Afghanistan. I used to carry a little knife around with me. I thought, if I'm kidnapped, I need to be able to defend myself. Uh, and it was ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> come on, like a little knife. What are you going to do with your little knife? You know, people come to take you with a machine gun. Uh, but it's like you, you know, in the beginning, you're afraid because it's not familiar. And then you're there. You get to know everything. Uh, then you start to feel like uh, everything is normal. You get used to, to a situation, no matter what the situation is. And now, you know, when I go back to the United States, the United States will seem like a foreign country to me. You know, because and then I have to get used to it again. It's like that. You know. In the beginning, there's a road, like a, a speed bump, uh, and then you get over it, and then you're OK. Like, the fear goes away. Even though your heart may be on one side only, you know what I mean? Uh, as a filmmaker, it's, you can do a lot more interesting things if you say, okay, like my heart, my mind might be on one side, but as a filmmaker, I want to make the most interesting film that I can. It will have a, you know, be multi-dimensional, and uh, and you'll make a better movie like that. To be slightly separated uh, from the group, but this is difficult. I mean, I understand that. Like, you, if you're a part of it, it's hard to say, okay, I'm going to step back and uh, observe what happens. Like observe like uh, my own friends, my own uh, side in this conflict, say. Uh, you know, because sometimes like uh, from the outside also things look different and you know. All I mean is that as a documentary filmmaker, sometimes uh, the most interesting thing you can do is, is step back a little bit from the group and observe the situation. And to really observe the situation, sometimes you have to be like, yeah, you're participating in it, but you're also an uh, observer. Like you're standing back now, you can't. You're not there to have conversations and like to uh, show your banner or whatever. You're there to uh, to really record it, you know. And to do that, you're you're not. Once you're with the camera, you're in the situation, but you're also out of the situation. You know, you're 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 looking at the world through this mediation of the lens, the screen, and you're doing it in order to do something, make a film. You know, and your job now, it's different. It's not the same as everyone else who's there without, uh, who's not making a film. You know, it puts you in a different situation. Uh, I'm not saying that you, like, 
that you change your idea politically. No, you're the same person. But if your ambition is uh, to make a film, so you have to sort of uh, step back from uh, from yourself, you know, uh, from your personal desires somehow, and think, okay, uh, how can I capture the situation in a way that it will be felt by an audience? So now you have a problem in your mind that you have to solve, which is completely different from the problems that the, the demonstrators, the ordinary demonstrators, are have in their minds. You know, which is you know, will the police come? I don't know. This uh, they're uh, trying, you know, expressing a particular political idea or something. But you, as a filmmaker, suddenly your your job is different. Your the problem you are solving is is not the same. You know, it's uh, you're engaged in a craft, and your craft has a purpose. You know what I mean? But the purpose is not related to uh, only to like um, it's it's bigger than uh, than one demonstration or one action or something. It your your craft is then extending over a range of days of events, uh, and you're thinking about it in terms of like uh, a long story which stretches. Uh, which has many dimensions, and it's not only, you know, one thing. And so suddenly, uh, the way you are thinking about what you're doing is is uh, has been altered. Now suddenly, you are not uh, just a demonstrator. You're someone who is making a document of a time. Say, like, you you can think about it like in the future, uh, 20, 30, 50 years, 100 years from now, what will people know about this time in Hong Kong? You know, what, how can I capture the moment so that in one century from now, people will look at this film and they'll be able to know what was happening, how is it happening, what did the people think. Now your job is totally much uh, bigger than the job of just a demonstrator who goes uh, and holds a sign. Now your job is like uh, to be Leo Tolstoy with a camera, you know. Um, this is uh, what makes it exciting. You have to remember the humanity of everyone. And it's like a lot more interesting when you can show things from many different perspectives and you know, see the world like from really as it is, which is like not one-sided, you know, but many, many-sided. Uh, and to me, this is like the fascinating thing about it. It's not that you don't have your own opinion. It's just that you were trying to capture reality, which is different from having just your own opinion. But we spend maybe too much time just thinking about our own opinion and uh, not enough time seeing the world from the point of view of other people. Like I think, you know, if you look at the political, economic, social problems, environmental problems in the world, I think all of those things are easy to solve if people can see the world from uh, another perspective. And uh, I think that's what, uh, you know, that's uh, for me, like th this is civilization. Uh, pure individuality is, uh, is uh, like being in the jungle, like being an animal. Uh, civilization is empathy, you know? Uh, this is the thing that human beings have. Uh, we can have empathy and understanding, not only for ourselves and our own family and our own group and our own tribe, but you can understand the, the whole world, actually, if you make an effort. Uh, and you can see the, the perspective of people who are completely, you would think, uh, completely unrelated to you and from a completely different background, with different interests, uh, you can also see their idea. And to me, this is the fascinating thing. I think the, wor the, the problems of the world can be addressed by, uh, through understanding, you know what I mean? Not by taking uh, only one position, but by trying to see the world as it is.